Okay, well, good morning, everybody, and I'm glad y'all are here. Today is our last Sunday school for the school year and our last um, class in our unit called Building and Baking with the Bible. And so today we will start with our opening prayer. All right, will y'all join me with our opening prayer and we can say the words and do the motions. Dear God, open my ears to hear your word. Open my eyes to see your ways. Open my hands to show your love. Open my mouth to sing your praise. Open my heart to love you more. Amen. I just put on the screen, Waiting. Yeah. Waiting. Okay. Waiting, right? Mm -hmm. So, all right, let me, hold on. I need, there's a lot of background noise. If everybody could mute real quick so we don't get a lot of feedback, that'd be good. Wait till it's time to talk and then we can unmute. Okay. So waiting. Now, as we were talking about last week, you know, we've been talking in this unit about all the times um, after the crucifixion when Jesus came back on the earth and where we ended last week was the story of the ascension when Jesus left the disciples and went back up into heaven. And if you remember last week when our story was the disciples were standing there watching as Jesus rose up into heaven and disappeared into the clouds. But before Jesus left, he promised that God would send the disciples a helper who would be with them forever. And he told them to wait in Jerusalem until the helper came. So we've all had to wait for something. So what are some things that you have to wait for? Okay, what about, I, I can think of something that's always hard for me to wait for, is whenever you've got a vacation planned and it's getting closer to the time you have to wait to be able to go do something fun, like a vacation or go somewhere. Well, sometimes waiting is not our favorite thing. I so, know, something that almost all of us have experienced waiting for. Yeah. The what? end of school. The end of school, exactly. Just a few more days or weeks counting it down and waiting for summer vacation. That's a good example. Well, the disciples had to wait after Jesus went back to heaven. He told them to go back to Jerusalem and wait for the helper that was going to be sent to them. And they had to wait 10 days before the helper came, the Holy Spirit. And do you know that the Holy Spirit came to them on a special day that was called Pentecost? And it was a Jewish celebration that was held 50 days after their Passover was when Pentecost was celebrated. So 50 days. So they had waited 10 days from last week when we talked about the ascension, okay? So now let's listen to our Bible story for today. God sends the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read it to you. It's found in the Bible in Acts chapter 2, but today I've got a, a neat version that is interactive version. So as I read, you'll be doing some things, okay? All right, so a new helper comes. Before Jesus went back to heaven, he promised to send a helper to his followers. He called that helper the Holy Spirit. So Jesus's friends waited in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come. While they were waiting, a great holiday came. Pentecost was a special day for Jesus's friends. On Pentecost, everyone celebrated 
and thanked God for the good food the farmers had grown. People brought special offerings to God and ate lots of good things. Jesus's friends were celebrating Pentecost and praying together. All of a sudden, they heard a noise like a strong wind blowing. Okay, so now for our interaction, let's pretend we're the wind and make a loud blowing sound. So cup your hands around your mouth and blow. All right, let me hear you. Can I hear you blow? Everybody doing it? Now blow even stronger. The wind was so loud, it filled the whole house. Then something else happened. Flames of fire appeared before each person's head. So, put your hands together, wiggle your fingers to make dancing flames. Now, put your hands over your head and make the flames dance over your head. The wind blew, so now blow again too. The flames danced, so make them dance over your head. All right, then everyone in the house was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a special helper Jesus sends to his friends on earth. So listen to the ways that the Holy Spirit helped Jesus' friends that day. When the Holy Spirit came, everyone in the house began to speak in oh, languages. They were speaking in languages they didn't even know. So now let's try some different languages. Wait, so all, so, the, so, so, so all the people are speaking in different languages? That's yeah, that was what the, the um, special thing that happened on Pentecost. So now we're going to do some different languages. Oh, so no. in English, we say hello. So let's all, let's all say hello. 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 Okay. Hello. All right. Good. I think y'all got that one. So next, in French, we say hello. We say bonjour. So say bonjour. 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 Good. Bonjour. There we go. Now, in Spanish, buenos dias. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Good. All right, next. German. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Very good. All right. And the last one, Japanese. Konnichiwa. 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 All of those are ways to say hello in different languages. Hello. I'm in China. Hello. Hello. Yeah, good. Okay, let me finish the story. It takes a long time to learn different languages, but the Holy Spirit helped Jesus' friends speak in different languages on the spot right there. So people from all over had come to Jerusalem that day for the holiday. When everyone heard the loud wind, they went to see what was happening. They were amazed to hear about Jesus in their own language. Everybody was able to understand what everyone else was saying. Jesus' friends were so excited to be able to tell so many people about Jesus. The Holy Spirit was a great helper. 
the Holy Spirit can help us too. We don't hear blowing wind or see dancing flames, but we know that the Holy Spirit is able to help us tell about Jesus to others. That is an amazing story. And what an exciting day that must have been. So now let's think about that for just a minute. Lots of these people that were there on that day of Pentecost had also been in Jerusalem a few weeks before when Jesus had been crucified, died, and when he was buried. And most of them had probably heard about how he had risen from the dead and how he was seen by lots of other people. And now, here were Jesus' disciples, his helpers, through the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking in different languages they could not have known. So suddenly the people knew that what everyone was saying was true. And many people believed in Jesus that day. And on that one day of Pentecost, over 3,000 people believed in Jesus and were added to the early church. That's a lot of people. And that was the beginning of the church. So now we are going to hear a picture book about the day of the beginning of the church. Hi everyone, welcome. Today we're reading a book called The Day When God Made Church, a child's first book about Pentecost. This book is written by Rebecca McLeod Hutto, illustrated by Stephanie Haig, and published by Paraclete Press. We all gather and wait. Jesus is gone and we are nervous. Everyone is curious to meet the one that Jesus would send us. The room is dark. Men, women, old people, young people, and animals wait. Wait for something to happen. Suddenly, the animals move with excitement. What's that noise? It grows louder. It feels like wind and it pounds like drum beats. It fills the room loud and full. Then the room grows brighter. Something hot and blazing shines on us. Darkness is gone. Fire fills the cold space. Now we feel warm inside our bodies. Smiles paint our faces. We all know something new is happening. We feel our hearts change inside. Is this what Jesus promised? A new sound comes. Words. Words like raindrops fall across the room. Some with loud sounds, some with quiet whispers. Words like drum beats, words that tiptoe through the air. People crowd around. They hear the words. They recognize the languages. Something new is happening. The Holy Spirit has arrived. Everyone around me begins to ask questions. Who is this Holy Spirit? What is happening? Why do we feel so different? Why do we hear so many languages? Peter stands. He walks around looking at each of us. I wonder, is he going to speak? Then Peter opens his mouth. He starts to preach.
His powerful voice fills the spaces around us and between us. Friends, something new is happening. Jesus has given us a wonderful gift. Don't be surprised if you all start to preach and dream too. Young and old, men and women, we all are called to something new. God is changing us so we can see old things in a new way. We all listen as Peter tells the story of God's love in Jesus. He reminds us all what Jesus taught us. We hear again how Jesus loves us. We, we remember when Jesus healed our friends, told us stories, and shared good news. We listen as Peter describes the day, that horrible day when Jesus hung on the cross, and we remember how sad we were. The dark clouds covered the sky, the earth shook, and Jesus died to save us. But our sadness did not last forever. Peter reminded us that soon there was joy, laughter, and dancing. Jesus came back to us. God raised him from the dead and gave us new life. We all hear the word Peter preaches, and the Holy Spirit changes us. The rivers of baptism pour out, and we feel God's love. A love for us, our families, our friends, and even people who are far away. People, people everywhere, all hear this good news. We all begin this new life together. We become a new family. We share our things, we break bread together, and we worship God. This is what we call the day of Pentecost, the day when church was born. Men and women, boys and girls, people from everywhere, we all are filled with the Holy Spirit as we worship Jesus, alive and risen. Alleluia. That end. Thank you for reading with me today. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya! So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, Jesus! They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle, and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. 
Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. The Events of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2 When the day of Pentecost came, all the disciples were together in one room. Suddenly a sound like a blowing wind came from heaven and shook the house, and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire coming to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. Now there were lots of people staying in Jerusalem at that time, and when they heard the sound, a crowd gathered together and each person heard them speaking in their own language. The people were amazed and said, aren't these people Galileans? How is it that we hear our own languages? We're from all over the place, some near, some far. Some of us are Jews and some Greeks. Some of us are Egyptians and some Arabs. They were amazed and said, what does this mean? Others weren't so sure and made fun of them. You've had too much wine to drink, they said. Then Peter stood up with the other disciples and addressed the crowd. Listen to me, all you here in Jerusalem. It's too early to be drunk. This is what God promised long ago. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. On my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Peter explained about Jesus' death and resurrection. He told them how God had been at work on this plan since long ago. Be sure of this, he said, God has made Jesus who you crucified both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were upset and said, what should we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized in Jesus' name for forgiveness and you will receive the Holy Spirit too. This great promise is for everyone. And that day loads and loads of people believed and were baptized and the church grew. So now it's time to choose how you want to respond to our Bible story today. So you can make something with Legos um, that stood out to you in the story. Maybe one of those scenes like we just saw in that clip, you could build with your Legos or with Play-Doh, or you can choose to make our recipe for today, which is M&M's Magic Bars. We're going to make M&M's magic bars because two reasons that M&M's with all their colorful um, candies kind of represent all the different languages that everybody was able to hear and understand on the day of Pentecost. And then also because um, it's a celebration, we like to have those um, magic bars at our family for special occasions. So since it's um, sort of the birthday of the church, we can think of that as um, a nice food to celebrate a special day, the birthday of the church. So the ingredients that you'll need are um, graham cracker crumbs, a can of sweetened condensed milk, butter, chocolate chips, 
some quick cook oatmeal and one cup of either peanut butter chips or you could use butterscotch chips and one cup of M&Ms. There's the ingredients, a picture of the ingredients. And so the first thing that you'll do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then melt the butter in the microwave. And next you'll take your or graham crackers and put them in a food processor or a blender to make them into some crumbs. And next you'll add your melted butter into the crumbs and you'll stir them really well to make um, the crust for your bars. The next step is to take a sheet of parchment paper and line a nine by 13 baking pan. And this is so that it doesn't stick to the pan whenever you're removing them. The parchment paper is really important step. And then you'll press the crumb mixture into the bottom of the pan on top of the parchment paper for your crust. And then you'll open the can of sweetened condensed milk and just pour it in onto the crumb layer. Then you'll take the half a cup of oats and sprinkle them in on top of the sweetened condensed milk. And next, you'll add a layer of two cups of chocolate chips. Then you'll add either your butterscotch chips or your peanut butter chips. And that's what it'll look like when you get all the chips in. Then you'll take the M&Ms and see, this is the part where I said, makes me think of all the different languages that the disciples could speak when the Holy Spirit gave them that ability. And you'll add in the M&Ms over the top, sprinkle those on, and then you will put it in the oven to bake for 25 to 30 minutes is what the recipe said, but mine usually takes about 30 minutes in my oven so that it's nice and set after you bake it for 30 minutes, take it out of the oven and let it cool so that the um, filling is, is set. It, it's important that you let it cool because it's still, when it comes out of the oven, it's still going to be not firm all the way. It needs to cool all the way before you slice it into bars. So probably needs to cool for about 20 minutes. And then you can slice it into bars and enjoy. The next time you see a kite or a pinwheel spinning or you feel the breeze, I want you to remember God's gift of the Holy Spirit is always with us, and that he sent the Holy Spirit to everyone to be our helper. I know if you're going to do your recipe, It'll take you a little bit of time to get all those ingredients together and do all those steps. So let's go ahead and say our closing prayer. You can join me um, saying the words. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit who is our helper. Help us to listen to the Holy Spirit's voice. We love you, God. Amen.